Vox Viva i dobrodošli u Američku ambasadu. I have the privilege here of speaking with Daniel Castro uh, here today with us today. Daniel Castro is an expert on many things, including IT and internet policy, uh, privacy, cybersecurity, intellectual property, and artificial intelligence. He is the Vice President of the Information Technology and Innovation Fund and the Director for Data Innovation. Uh, he was also listed under FedScoop's Top 25 Most Influential People Under 40 in Government and Technology. Thank you for being with us here today, Daniel. Thanks for having me. So uh, to get started, would you tell us about your meetings here in Zagreb and what you've learned so far about the U.S. and Croatia partnership? Absolutely. So this week I had the opportunity to um, speak and attend the American Chamber of uh, Commerce's Digital Croatia event. Uh, it was really a great event because it brought together uh, you know, individuals and experts from government and the private sector, nonprofits, academia, who were talking about what Croatia is doing as part of digital transformation. And one, there was a lot of energy in this area, which is always great to see. Um, and, and two, it really showed that there's opportunities for collaboration between the United States and Croatia because there's a commitment to growing the digital economy um, and there's really opportunities on both sides to, you know, uh, increase trade and investment in these areas. So there was a lot of conversation about um, basically where the country can go. And so I think there's good opportunities kind of on both sides, both American businesses looking to expand in Croatia, Croatia businesses that are looking to expand in the United States um, to work together and also for our governments to work together on these common goals of increasing trade and investment. That's great. That's wonderful to hear. And uh, what are some of the cybersecurity threats that Croatia, the U.S., and other partners um, need to focus on? Yeah, so there's a lot of global trends right now that uh, impact cybersecurity for everyone. So some of the big ones are ransomware attacks, um, phishing attacks, attacks on things like the Internet of Things, smart devices, and then cloud security. Hmm. And so, you know, this is an area where we all have to be working together. Um, cybersecurity is not something that any company can solve on its own, any government can solve on its own. It really requires joint partnerships. Um, so, you know, during this week, I had the opportunity to meet with some folks in the Croatian government um, that were talking about some of the investments that they're making um, and some of the ways they've worked together with the U.S. government to increase their own capabilities in this space, uh, including around training and, and the cyber workforce. I think that's a, a critical area. Um, we also talked about you know, where the threats are coming from. Um, you really have two types of threat actors. So you have the non-state actors who are primarily motivated by profit. So these are some of the ones who are doing ransomware attacks, for example. These are criminal organizations, and the way to address that threat is by increasing cybersecurity practices for the private sector and then strengthening cooperation around law enforcement because you know, these are um, you know, these crime organizations that operate across borders. So that's an opportunity for, for closer partnership. The other type of cyber threat actor that we see are, are the state actors, particularly you know, Russia, China, Iran, um, these are where you know, we need to work together on a common defense and you know, really think about how we can work together on issues like deterrence in the cyber realm. Oh, wow. Thank you. And uh, why is it important for a country to have strong policies around cybersecurity? Um, well, there's so many opportunities for us to work together. And so, for example, the cyber workforce issue is one where you know, we need to figure out how we can effectively train cyber professionals you know, so we can have more people out you know, doing this work. Um, it's, a, it's a difficult challenge because government is competing with the private sector on getting enough workers. Um, we already have, you know, a, a STEM pipeline challenge um, in both the United States and Croatia. And then also, once you have these professionals coming out of college, early career folks, you also have to keep training them because cybersecurity is always changing. So you have to make sure you really have a, a means to keep them up to date and, and current with all the latest threats and, and challenges. Um, so that's one area. You also have government, you know, being able to actually invest in cybersecurity itself to help demonstrate how the technology can be effectively applied. So figuring out, you know, how they can do effective cloud security themselves, how they can have, you know, security operation centers and, and do good information sharing, um, both between other governments and also from government to business and business to government. So lots of opportunities, I think, to 
to really kind of leverage that. And the, the last area I'd mention is digital infrastructure, right? There's a, a real commitment, and, and this is some of the conversations we had this week about how Croatia's really investing in you know, this kind of 2030 strategy about how it can be um, you know, increasing investments in areas like digital wallets or um, electronic IDs. And if you think about it, right, if you think about how traditional investments in uh, you know, the domestic economy were th for things like roads, bridges, those types of things. You did that because that's how you got goods and products to market. Mm -hmm. Well, the internet, you know, digital infrastructure is how we get digital services to market. And so if you want these, uh, if you want digital trade to be successful, you have to have a secure infrastructure. Okay. And uh, can you tell us more about how uh, Croatia can be a leader in the region in terms of cybersecurity and other policies? Yeah, so I think there's um, a real need for uh, countries, um, especially in this region, to continue to invest in cybersecurity and and show how um, you know it, it is just essential to the digital economy. I think that you know Croatia is really interesting because it, it has such this strong commitment to digital transformation, and as it's doing that, it has to make sure that it's secure. That you know when people are going online to do their banking or you know sending in their electronic health records to their doctor that they're, they're confident that their information is secure, that their communications are secure. And so, you know, part of this is really just continuing to invest in the technology, um, continuing to monitor and, and track trends, uh, and continuing to talk about this at the highest levels of government. Because again, it's, it's gonna require partnerships between government, the private sector, and academia, and also cross-border partnerships. And here is where I think, you know, the, the transatlantic relationship is so essential. You know, by working together, um, you know, the threats that are faced in Croatia are the same threats that are faced in the United States. So we should be working together and, and we are working together. And I think uh, continuing to grow that partnership will only help all of us. That's great. And before we conclude, uh, could you share with us what got you into this line of work and what interests you most about the field of cybersecurity? Absolutely. So, yeah, my, my background's in cybersecurity and also public policy, and I have a, a technical computer science background, but also a, a foreign policy background. And I think, you know, blending the two is really important because, um, you know, as we see, it's not, you know, solving cybersecurity is not just a, a technology challenge. You know, at the, at the organizational level, they often talk about um, people, process, and technology as, as the key drivers of, of technological uh, change and improvement. And, and it's true, I mean, you do have to Im invest in all of those areas, um, but it's also about, you know, these partnerships that can be formed and working together. And that gets to, you know, uh, relationships and, um, you know, the different types of agreements we've seen, for example, around uh, law enforcement um, and even treaties around these types of issues. So I think, you know, there's a, a real interesting blend of those two areas. Um, but also, you know, innovation is essential um, for, you know, increasing productivity and, and growing the economy. And so, you know, if we think about you know, I guess at heart I'm a, a technology optimist and technology enthusiast. So, you know, I'm also very interested in how government policy can help support, you know, technological innovation, especially digital innovation, because it's so essential to our economy, to the types of improvements and quality of life that, you know, everyone cares about. Like, you know, we want to have better health care. We want to have better school systems and educational systems. Um, the way to get that is through investing in digital and seeing digital transformation in so many parts of the economy. And, you know, again, cybersecurity has to be part of that. So I think bringing all those elements together is, is very important. And so, um, yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed working in this space. And it was great to be here in, in Croatia this week to, to work with others who are also interested in those issues. Well, it sounds like you've had a really interesting week. And thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for telling us about it. Absolutely.